Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Knit State of Mind podcast. Um, what's today? Sunday, August 8th. And we realize it's been quite some time since we've been on here. We just looked it up about three months, eh? Yeah. Three months. <laughs> we normally say we'll be back in three weeks. This time it was three months. But, you know, life happens. I'm Heather. Yes, I'm Wanda. And um, what are my things? So, Ralvary Wadi Wat, Instagram, Knit State of Mind, Zest in Class for the personal stuff. But however much we try, we're not super big posters. So, but yeah, you can check us out there. Yeah. And I'm Heather T on Ravelry and uh, Heather T3 on Instagram. But again, I've learned that I am a failure at social media, but we do try sometimes. Hey, they. <laughs> We have our strengths and we have our challenges. Um, get everyone the rundown of where we've been. So short version of where we've been is when we last recorded, it was like mid-May-ish. Um, and then came the end of the school year, which as all you educators know, is super busy time of year. Um, then I was thinking about moving and decided not to, but that was a whole process Wanda actually did move, still here like locally. Um, two weeks but, ago, so it's so, go. And got a new job, so that's been going on. So congratulations. Thank you, and I got tenure, so. <laughs> and tenure, yay! Um, and then now it's the beginning of the school year, so I've been busy with that. Um, well, we, our break from podcasting literally has been the end of the school year to the beginning of the school year. Right unplanned that's just how it happened you would think we would be podcasting more in between but um contrary to popular beliefs right. educators are still doing things over the summer so <laughs> yeah. um yeah and so like i said wanda is actually still here locally um and we are just podcasting on zoom because as you guys know the pandemic has been having its waves and we just want to be better safe than sorry especially because I personally am around a lot of people every day so yeah. just trying to be careful and you just y'all just tested all of your your little ones right yeah mm -hmm. that's pretty big yeah. too yeah <laughs> so yeah we just got done testing we have about 550 students at my school and they all came in to get their COVID test these last couple days so yeah. we were very proud of our staff effort to get that done for sure oh, seriously that's that's a major feat for sure ah, well we'll see what this next school year entails <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean somehow or other it's going to be amazing it always is yeah. <laughs> we still know how <laughs> we adapt you do that regardless so all right, so how do we want to do this today? <laughs> I mean, should we just show what we've been, we'll start with what we finished and then update people on what we're working on? Okay. All right. Do you want to go first for finishes or you want me to go first? Um, I only have one finish, so I can, kick, you go first, then? Yeah, I can kick us off and then, um, so this finish it's actually blocking right now i didn't initially block it but i i decided to block it because we were podcasting because we started using it already oh um i got into this be, when, before we started moving i finished this like at least a month maybe two months ago before we started moving um one of the things i enjoy doing is design um and so we were looking maybe i'll show it first and then I don't know. <laughs> I'm so rusty. Um, I don't even know what this is. This is so exciting. <laughs> it's, not extra, it's very boring, though. It's so boring. We're kicking. But you didn't tell me it was going to be boring. I, I was warned about that. We're kicking things off with something that's so boring. Okay, I'll just show you, and maybe you can tell me what you think it is, and then I'll talk about it more. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> it's, boring. it's so boring. I mean, it looks like a blanket. It's very elegant colors. Is it? It's, but it's too small to be a blanket. It's like a blanket for a stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blanket for Alf. Okay, this is so fun. Anyway, I'll tell you what it is. You yeah. can see the whole thing. Could you see the whole thing? I think I saw the whole thing, yeah. Okay, so it's actually a bath mat. Oh, is it cotton yarn? 
cotton yarn. Oh, okay, I can't tell that, of course, with the screen. So, so yeah, so we were saying we needed a new bath mat, and then I was like, I could knit one, and we were looking at bath mats and and like, um, so one I love West Elm, even though I can't really afford it, but there's an outlet store in Vacaville, California. Anyway, um. And so apparently knit stuff housewares are in right now, knit bath mats, pillows, throws, all of that. So um, I was inspired by that and a couple of other places. And it was just regular garter um, examples. Are you frozen, Heather? Are you there? You're frozen. You are so frozen. I'm totally frozen. I was like trying to look like I was listening to you, but I didn't hear anything you just said. But I'm unfrozen now. <laughs> if you want, if you want to say that again. Oh, I think I'm back. <laughs> I'll, I'll save you all all of my West Elm stories. But the the so basically they have a bath mat that is simple garter, and I think it's one color. I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, it was inspired by this. And then I started Googling knit bath mats and there are all sorts of knit bath mats. And so I had this dishy from mm -hmm. um, knit picks hanging around and Mark loves gray and gray is pretty neutral. And so um, what I did was I wanted it to be kind of thick. So mm -hmm. I decided to... Um, I held three strands together of the dishy and I used a US 10 because I wanted a tighter fabric. Um, and so it's tight and it's squishy and we were using it already. But like I said, um, I also started knitting a different way towards the second half. So both these two, actually I can hold it this way. Um, I wanted to block it to try to even it out some because it's looser. Mm -hmm. Here mm -hmm. and tighter here but I just picked this off the blocking mat before it dried so I may have just ruined that whole process um US 10 simple garter at first we were going I was going to make it this way and Mark and I sat down and we like measured it and then I was like wait a minute Mark this is way too long for it to be oriented this way so then we ended up saying okay, this will be the length of the mat. And so basically changed the direction that the stripes were going in. Redesigned it because I was like, that's going to be way too big for our bathroom. Cause he was like, keep going, keep going. And I was like, mm. and I started knitting it. I was like, no, that's way too wide. So just changed it midway through. So that's my FO, it's been done for a while. We've been, it looks like it's exactly the right size though. Yeah, we've been using it since the day we moved in. So, yeah. And that was a. I think I'm back. That actually is it. I don't know. That may have been the thing that brought my mojo back because another thing is in that three months, I had really lost my knitting mojo. I wasn't knitting at all. Um, Oh, actually, I know I know one of the reasons why, and I'll share that a little bit later. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sit back because I know you have some things. Okay, so I've moved because I was having internet issues in the other room, which is a little farther from my uh, modem or whatever that thing's called, router. Um, so... Now I will start the sock parade of all the socks that I made this summer. <laughs> Um, so I finished these socks, which are the Fragment Socks by Helen Stewart. Um, I had started these a long time ago, and I finished them at some point this summer. And these are made with that, I think it's Regia Yak Sock Blend yarn or something. The details are on my Ravelry. So there are two of them. Yes. So finished those. And I really, really enjoyed this knitting with that yarn. So I had another ball of it in a different color. So when I was on my travels to Oregon, I brought these and I just made um, a three by one ribbed sock with a one by one ribbed cuff out of the other color I had of that yeah, yarn. I think I'm pretty sure it's Regia, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, 
And so I did these on a size one needle, which I usually use a zero, but it's just um, the yarn's a little bit thicker than sometimes I use. And I don't know, just mixed up nice and cushy. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect um, warm tones. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. So then I had some leftovers. So I did my classic leftovers afterthought heel socks. So I used up all the rest of this like brown or tan color and um, then the have a little bit left of the burnt orange. Yeah. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So that was nice. Three pairs of socks out of two balls of yarn and two of the pairs were pretty like had pretty long cuffs. So. Yeah, that's good. They all have their own um, character and they're perfect for fall too. So. Yeah, so I was excited about that. So then, let's see what else is in the bag. <laughs> um, okay, so I did have another pair of um, Felici gift socks going. Um, so these are on a size zero. These are the color toucan. Um, and this is the by the Seine River pattern, which I really like for stripes because it I don't know just looks there's some patterns that I think don't look very good with stripes but I think this looks pretty good with stripes yeah, definitely seems to work well you've done that you've made that pattern before right yeah yeah I've made it a few times before the actual pattern it has something different for the ribbing that um, isn't quite as stretchy and so I made these for their gift but I made them for somebody who um likes to have a much stretchier sock at the top to get over the ankles easily. So mm -hmm. I cast on in like three sizes bigger needle to make sure the cast on was stretchy enough. Mm -hmm. And then I changed the back of the pattern just to make it more stretchy. And then the front is as in the pattern. So mm -hmm. uh, and there's two of those. Four, four so far. Okay. <laughs> so that's four. <laughs> Uh, I mean, again, this is three months, right? And I was, some of the time I was off work and traveling and I did have a lot of time to knit stuff. So um, at some point, and this actually, I think this was still in May. Um, so some point still in May, I knit these. Ooh, those are fun. <gasps> and the little um, surprise on the back. <laughs> yeah. So this pattern is called skedaddle. Let me see if you can. I feel like I have, I have those saved. The, the original is, is it gray and red? Yes. The original is gray and red. Yeah. So yeah, I want to make those. Nice. And I, I'm pretty sure it's a free pattern or at least it was at one time. And I have made several pairs of these cause I just really enjoy this little cable detail on the back and I don't know, there's just something about them that I really enjoy. Um, so this was a sock set that I had gotten from Tiny Human Knits. Mm. So the colors came together. It was this pink and this green. Yeah. Um, and so as you can see, I used the green at the top. This is the way it's written in the pattern. The pattern actually then just has the rest of the sock all the same color, but I knew I wouldn't have enough yarn because the, the pink was only a 50 gram ball. Mm -hmm. So I just did the literally the bottom of the heel in green and just like the little tippy tip totally of the toe. works. It's so yeah. cute. <laughs> and this, this is how much of the pink yarn I had left. Good job. <laughs> that's what I was digging around in the bag to find. So that's number five. Number if we're five. keeping score. We're keeping, we're keeping score. <laughs> oh, there's a stitch marker. Oh, you know what? These aren't totally done because I dropped a stitch and I just noticed I need to go back and fix that. Whoops. Okay. Uh, continuing on the tiny human knits train. Um, um, I have these. I'm pretty sure this was her sock set called 32 that she did for her birthday at some point. Um, again, it's just a Oh, actually, these socks have a funny story. Story time. <laughs> so um, I, as I said, I went to Oregon twice. And the first time that I went, I brought this yarn and I thought, 
Um, I don't want to have to deal with heels and toes and like whatever. I'm going to knit afterthought everything socks, which is basically where you just knit like a giant tube and then you end up cutting it in half in the middle and you add toes and heels. Got it. So I did that. I knit the entire tube and then I got home and I was like, okay, now I need to do this. And I could not for the life of me figure out how to cut it in the middle or no, did I actually end up cutting it in the middle? No, here's what happened. So I had made the tube and I basically did rib cast on, did rib, knit to the other end and did rib. Yeah. But the problem with that is that the bind off looks different than the cast on. Oh, I yeah. Did not figure out how to get the bind off and the cast on to look the same. Mm -hmm. So I went to cut it in the middle and I was like, whatever, it's going to be fine. And then I was having a hard time figuring out how to cut it in the middle. And I was like, you know, it is going to drive me crazy that the cast on and the bind off, like the cuffs look different because one was cast on and one was bound off. So then I counted how many rows there were and I marked the middle and I unraveled back to the middle. Oh, wow. Cast on a second one from the top and knit down again. See? Yeah. You're, you're committed. You're a committed knitter. Well, I feel like one thing I've learned, I mean, it's partly maybe from, I, I think it's actually a lot from knitting with you a lot. Cause I feel like you are very um, thoughtful about making sure your item that you make is what you want. Yeah. And I think like before I spent a lot of time knitting with you, I was always kind of like, Oh, if it doesn't come out, I'll just give it away or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like I've learned that from you. So thank you. Well, ironically, I have something now that I'm like, I shouldn't have gone back, but I didn't. And I really like it. So I'm going to suck it up and try to ignore what I didn't go back and correct. Or the fact that I didn't go back and just start completely over. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So stay tuned for that, everybody. Okay. What number are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. <laughs> oh no wait there you was... okay here's number seven <laughs> um these are made out of a blacker yarns mohair blend sock yarn so it's just some kind of wool i forget what kind of wool and mohair and again i have no idea what the colors are called but it's on my ravelry page yeah. so this is a thicker more like a sport weight sock yarn um and it's this used up pretty much all of the blue, I think, and I maybe have a little bit of the gray left because I had a 50 gram ball of each. Wait, what colors are those? They look like two-tone green socks to me. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like a blue and a gray. It looks pretty similar to how it looks in real life on my camera, but maybe it's not coming I, through. Okay. Yeah. Can you see how it's blue and gray? Yeah, when you point it out. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's not a bluish greenish color. It's a straight. Uh, yeah, it is a little blue green. Yeah, it's like a sea green type of a or sea blue type of a color. Okay. That okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have my vision stuff so. Yeah. No, you're yeah, you're not cuz this is like teal or something right here, right? And it is yeah. Anyway. Okay, so that's those. Those aren't very interesting. And finally, I normally every year I do Christmas in July. Um, um, and so I got out some Christmas yarn. Ooh. And did a Christmas sock. Nice. You're just all set. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I just think about being ready for the upcoming season and having all of your things to go, even though you'll you'll still be knitting, but it's nice to have things ready to, to wear and enjoy as well. Right, yeah. So I had some leftover of this sock yarn and I tried making a color work sock with the, the red and green yarn as like the color and it really didn't turn out. So I'm not even gonna show it cause I don't wanna um, disrespect the designer of the color work pattern by showing my horrible version of it because it's a really beautiful pattern that I will knit with different yarn. So you you won't show us even with the caveat. Maybe when you actually are you going to keep that in and then maybe when you make it again 
you can show it. Sorry, my cat's right there. I'll do that. I'll save it and I'll show it when I show the pair of socks that looks the way the designer intended them to look. Sounds good. <laughs> um, okay, so I have one more and that leads kind of leads into my first whip. Okay. So if you wanna do uh, one of your whips first before I do that? Okay, so um, you had what, you showed seven, eight socks. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take your, what's, how does it go? I'll take your seven, eight socks and I'll, um, I'll raise, I'll, I'll show a half sock. <laughs> how would you say that? I'm thinking the whole poker thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so can you see that? Oh, I do see that. That looks like a beautiful pattern on there. So I, um, these are the poet sock. Oh, that sorry Nordland pattern that's also a sweater and all that stuff. Yeah. So I had this in my queue for a while. And I think I told Heather I wanted to knit some socks. And I've been wanting to use this yarn. I don't know if you remember when we were texting. Um, I was like, but it's so nice. I feel like I should make a top with it, but I don't have yeah. a top. This is, but now I need to remember what yarn it is. This is Lamstring's, Lamstring's yarn. And I can't remember the colorway, um, but I had bought this as an option for my shifty as well and decided not to use it. And so I cast these on back in June because I started working on these uh, when I flew to New York. I flew to New York to see my dad um, for Father's Day back in June. And so I finished the one. And I love this pattern. And I think, you know, at first I was like, will it get lost in this yarn? But can you see that? I can see it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it gets lost because the something about how the cables and the textures go together, it shows up pretty well. Right? Yeah. It's always weird holding things up on Zoom. But anyway, so that's yeah. that. Um, it's just, I think it's one size. So this is 60 stitches because the cable pattern and it was, I mean, the, the lace pattern and it was, it's a super fun repeat, um, twisted stitch here. Um, and then just regular, it's been a while since, honestly, so it's been a while since I finished this sock, if I'm being honest. And every time I go to see my mom, I'm like, oh, I'm going to work on the other one. I'm going to work on the ribbing. So I'm still yeah on the ribbing because she actually puts me to work when I go to see her. So in my mind, I'm going to get all of this work done and I don't. And so here's the ball of yarn wound up. Well, um, I, you might have noticed I'm realizing as I look at my pile of socks, only out of all of those socks, two, only two out of the eight were actually a pattern you have to concentrate on at all. Yep. But <laughs> yes, surprisingly, I was trying to figure it out because I, I, I started these and I think I finished this before I made the mat. So this interestingly may have been what brought my mojo back, but it, but then I don't know, but then the mat, I was like, it was super simple and easy. So maybe that brought my mojo back. I don't know. Um, but so yeah, that's the only sock I have going right now. And I've been debating just getting a, a regular a vanilla sock on the needles too. Yeah. But. yeah. Sometimes for me, that's like all I can handle. <laughs> I don't know. Well, so speaking of easy knitting, this is my other FO. So at some point last, I think it was in May because the end of the school year was definitely stressful this year and this past year. And I was like, I can't focus. I really just want to do something easy like garter stitch. At the time, I was also still working on stashing down, which that has since failed because I bought some yarn. <laughs> but anyways, so I was like, I'm going to make another. Well, I really wanted to. OK, I really wanted to make the half and half triangles wrap that's like sweeping the Internet. Um, but I didn't have enough of any one color of yarn and I was trying to stash down. So I was like, instead, I'm going to make that another one of those four points. Oh, yeah. Because it's not really the same thing, but kind of the same idea, right? Yep. So I got um, to, up to my stash and I had this green <laughs> in my stash. Oh. 
And I had this blue in my stash. Oh, that looks well. And I had this blue in my stash. And I did end up ordering one ball of like a grayish color to go is, bring it all together. That is but such a good four points. If I can show it the whole thing. That is such a, that's a good one. Yeah. So I was very happy with that. And I did, I don't know, it took me like a month to knit it or something. And it was very soothing. And um, I really enjoy this pattern. And I was very, very pleased with, so I've made one of these before and I did figure out finally how to pick up the stitches to look really even and good on the back. Did I write down how I did that so I could do it again? No, <laughs> but this one looks really good. Well, hopefully you'll remember again next yeah. Muscle memory. So I finished that and then I was like, I think I texted, I think I texted you like, I just bought yarn for that damn half wrap because I still could not get it out of my mind. I was like, I have to make this thing. It's just taking over. It's just taking over. I'm susceptible like everybody else to the pressure mm -hmm. of the half wrap. Mm -hmm. So I did buy yarn for it. And it. I'm glad I did because it turned out to also be very good travel knitting. So the two colors I bought were, um, so fun which it is truly that bright it's, yeah i love that pink so, I, love, I think those two go well together yeah um and i'm knitting these i actually did try to get gauge because i was worried i would run out of yarn if i didn't get gauge so i'm knitting these on size two carbons needles and here's where i am i finished the dark darker triangle I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> and I am, it looks like I'm pretty close to being done, but on the second triangle, the rows are getting longer. Right. So based on how much yarn I've used, I've actually only about halfway done with the second triangle. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, I understand why everybody's knitting multiples of these because it is really... <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. my, my heart, my hat goes off to you all. It is so enticing. It is so beautiful. I know that yarn is gorgeous because I, I mean, I still have my four points blanket from like two, three years ago on the needle. So I'm like, if I have the four points still on the needles, like the half and half, is it really a realistic knit for me? <laughs> um, yeah. but then you know when you and I it it's you see how it happens though because right. Heather and I got together for some knitting a, a few weeks ago and I saw her working on it and I was still I was like no I was like that's like the equivalent of, what did we say like eight nine pairs of socks yeah um so yeah. I was like, that's the equivalent of eight nine pairs of socks come on <laughs> and then what happened a few hours later when I got home, I was like, well, I have this yarn already. It's not linen quill. And I did. I ended up buying more yarn to potentially make one. Um, and now it's sitting. And yeah. I it sit because I always get into this thing then where I'm like, oh, but these could be, it's like sweater, a sweater's quantity of each yarn. <laughs> and I'm like, these could be some really cool sweaters. Right. The good thing is I love the yarn, so whether it's a half and half or something else, but yeah, it's easy to see how it becomes addictive. So are you going to, they're doing a cow too, right? Are you? They are. So, and it's like very, there's like some kind of really amazing prize if you. Like a $500 yeah. gift certificate. Yeah. I think the deadline is October. I think I should be done with this by then. I mean, the other thing, so two more things. One reason I made so much progress on this is when my back was hurting, I had to lie down. And this was one of the only things I could knit lying down. Um, so it did get quite a lot of time put into it. Um, so yeah, I think I should be able to get it done in time to enter it. I mean, that's not why I started yeah. knitting it, but yeah. may as well, I mean, right? Finish, might as well. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to say about this is I did a little investigating. So the pattern calls for wrap and turn short rows. And I had seen some other people say they had used German short rows. And then my favorite kind of short rows normally is Japanese short rows. So um, I'll show you right now what my section where the wraps, where the short rows got picked up looks like, just so you could have a visual. So I think it looks really nice and neat. Mm -hmm. um, and I did do the wrap and turns, but what I did is before I started, because I knew this was gonna be a giant thing. And if you kind of like mess up on how you're doing the short rows, it would, because it would take you a long time to really realize it because I, it, I just was like, I need to figure this out before I start or I'm gonna, it's gonna have to be all ripped out if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I actually made a swatch that was like 30 stitches and I experimented with each of the three types of short rows mm -hmm. to see which swatch looked the best on the right side after I had picked up the short row. Yes. Yep. So I did several wrap and turns. I did several German short rows and I did several Japanese short rows. And then I went and picked them all up and I looked at which one looked the best at the end. And for me in garter stitch, the wrap and turns looked the best. Okay. So that's what I did. Okay. So you um, with the original pattern. Right. But that that's just like a tip, I guess, if you're thinking about doing this pattern and whether or not you should change the short rows, I would definitely recommend trying out all of them to see what you like the look of just so you don't put all the work into it and then it doesn't turn out how you want it. And for me, if I ever make it, I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's different. I cannot, it doesn't matter what the pattern is. I cannot get German short rows to look good. I don't know if it's something about like my knitting style. Um, it, it's hit or miss for me. Yeah, with the German short rows. But I, I like, act of knitting German short rows more than that, like the act of wrap and turns. And I still want to try Japanese short rows. I need to make something by Junko Okamoto because she yeah. uses that in a lot of her patterns. Yeah. Okay. So um, can I show what, should I show what made me lose my knitting mojo? Sure. Also, I want to know, are we going to discuss at some point? So for everybody out there, um, I got a mysterious picture of a swatch of fabric the other day and was told that the reason I had gotten the picture would re be revealed later. So are we going to talk about that at some point? You want to talk about it now? No, no, it's okay. We could talk about the other thing first. Okay. Because it won't take long to talk about I that. I want to make sure we're not going to forget about that. Okay. Thanks for reminding me about that. Okay. So what made me lose my knitting mojo? lost my knitting mojo <clears throat> oh no that made you lose your knitting mojo can we see this yeah we can see it it looks great it doesn't look like a mojo killer so you see this is basically done right so I don't know where I went wrong. My gut told me along the way that I went wrong somewhere. So just a reminder, this is the Leyden. I freak, we'll put the information below. It's been a while. I'm using um, the fiber company Luma. It's a cotton blend, cotton, it's a cotton blend. So there's a part of the instructions that I just wasn't a hundred percent sure of. And I went and looked at comments and it seemed like the way I did it was the right way. But like I told you before with the construction, if you see, it's like sideways. And so you do a provisional cast on. I think that's this part. There are so many steps in this. And then you pull that out and you pick them up and then you start knitting in the other direction, right? And so she says to go from the middle. I don't want to give away too much, but you just knit like the same amount. But something told me it wouldn't matter if I knit it a little bit less, mm -hmm. but I did what I think was following the directions. And this thing is huge. Oh, I finished, you know, like, cause I finished off everything, the sleeves, the neck and, and I put it on and I was like, there's like a little gap in the back. So it's, and I wanted it baggy, but it just doesn't fit right at present. And so 
I just was really disappointed. And I think I persevered and maybe continued the neck. And then I was like, am I going to pick up all of these stitches at the bottom? Uh huh. And I think the bottom's like the rest of the sweater where it's an I cord bind off. So am I going to pick this up, finish it off, I cord bind off, and weave in? And I'm not excited about it. So it's yeah. just fitting. Mm -hmm. And part of me is like, maybe you should just do it. Maybe because it's a cotton blend. Oh, it's it's here. It's cotton, linen, merino, and silk. It's everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can somehow shrink it. I don't know. Yeah. And then also when I put it on, I actually felt like the colors weren't as flattering. Mm -hmm. So I just lost my excitement. Yeah. I mean, I think the color is fine. I mean, it's no gold or burnt orange, but it's not. <laughs> it's like I tried to venture out. <laughs> We was like, I need, and you remember we were texting about this, the two colors, I was like gold or burnt orange. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to venture out. I mean, would it fit anybody else that you know that might like to wear it? So that was the other thing. I was like, well, I could finish it off and think of someone it'll fit or, you know, it still do something. I was like that versus pulling out and using the yarn for something else. But it's so sad because remember when this issue first I, I was so excited about this top. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, if it was me, we all know what I would do. I would put it in a bag and leave it in the closet for three years. Well, it's been sitting for th three months. <laughs> <laughs> it's been sitting, yeah, for three months, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I figured I would show you all because it is very, you know, since the last episode. Yeah, because you, actually you, you were pretty far. I think you had done most of the body on the last episode. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um, before you show me the mystery thing, in case we run out of time, quick update on twigs. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's done. It looks good. But it's not done. Yeah. Those ends. But those but it, does, it does fit. I tried it on and hopefully I'll be wearing it next time we record. And does it because you were going for a, a slightly more fitted fit. Mm -hmm. Do you accomplish that? Yeah, it's definitely, I actually, it does, I can, it fits me now, but I hope it grows a teeny tiny bit, which it should, because it's super wash yarn. Um, I, I think I'm basically getting the pattern gauge now, okay. which the other one I made was like a, a little bit of a bigger gauge. Cool. Um, so yeah, once I finish this and block it, I'll wear it, and then we can also, I'll show the differences between the two. But Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah. That'll be a treat. I'm very happy with it. I just have not had the stamina to weave in all the ends understandably cool all, all right, right you want to show me the mystery yeah so the mystery and do you do you have more whips uh no i cast on like a vanilla sock last night but it's not interesting i'll show okay. it next time do you have any more whips i do okay so we'll see how this bat what we do because we'll go we're gonna go into gold mustard okay next for the rest of the pot, for the rest of these whips. Yay! Like, so yeah, so I, Mark and I went to grab dinner. This was Friday and I had on this outfit and I was like, you know, Bay Area, I need something to put on. And I keep saying, I think I've told you this, Heather, I need a nice baggy sweater. I need to knit a nice baggy sweater, but it needs pockets, it needs buttons or whatever. And then I put this on with that outfit and I was like, oh, this is so perfect but I haven't been wearing it because it had, it got a hole in it. Oh. it. So this is not me made, this is not handmade. This is store-bought. I'll try to show you some of it. So it's just, it has pockets. It has bobbles on the sleeves, but I haven't worn this in at least a year. And so we were getting ready to go out and I was like, I'm going to mend this right now because I'm going to wear this. And he was like, how long is this going to take? I was like, 20 minutes. 
<laughs> Probably take more like 30, but whatever. So I used whatever yarn I had. And here's, I'm so proud of it. I am so proud of you too. Um, this is the yarn from, what's the name of that? The summer t-shirt I made by um, last summer. Oh God, I can't, it's Lino. The yarn is Lino, I think. Anyway, this the one with the buttons in the front. Yeah, by Summer Tales. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the color is it's different, but I was like, that's part of the fun and aesthetic. So I looked at the tag. This is actually cotton, and I think this is like linen or some blend. I was like, what? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so I think this was very pink knits. She has a tutorial for a patch, and then I forget the other type, but this is the patch. And so then I was like looking at it inside out and on this side and I was like trying to figure out the pattern and I was like this looks like it's like two pearls and then a knit but then what do you do on the other side and then I texted Heather a picture and I was like what does this look like and then what did you say? I said garter rib but I also didn't get back to you right away because I think I was in a meeting yeah. at work. So I had started I had started already and I was like doing it and then ripping out and I was like I think this is it but then when you said garter rib I looked up garter rib and I was like that looks very close the only thing I realized was different is that it's not knit two it's knit one pearl two uh, okay so that helped a lot because it was like and then on the other side you knit but then it's also the reverse right so mm -hmm. this side is the right side is actually pearl two. It's knit two, pearl one. Wait, I'm making stuff up. The right side is one stockinette and two garter, and the wrong side is just knit. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's my my patch. That looks awesome. How fun! That's something. Yeah. New. I don't so yeah, so this is my mended um, store-bought sweater that is now back in the rotation. Yeah. All right. And I like the charm of it. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. You guys might notice we have a bit of a light change and picture change. The computer died, so we are now restarting. <laughs> So FYI. So while we got that all sorted out, I discovered that I had a gold thing that needed mending. Also, if you oh. were alertly watching, it was sitting like right here throughout the video because I rushed out here and didn't clean up. But I, um, my Vertices Unite shawl has a hole in it that I oh. discovered. Um, there you can see the hole. Sometime towards the end of May, it was in my work bag and I took it out. I've had two shawls that have gotten holes here. And I think it's because they get stuck in my zipper maybe because it's like the end that hangs down. Mm -hmm. So the other one I fixed, but I just thought that was funny because I was like, oh my God, this thing is so unsightly in the video. And it's something gold that I have to mend. Yes, <laughs> so. that is so crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Mending all of the gold. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually kind of sad we went through all of that and I didn't show this thing sooner because who knows if y'all stuck, stuck with us. Right. But um, I'm very excited about this one, actually. And I should take this off because I don't want the golds to clash. Oh yeah, no, no clashing golds. <laughs> Oh, right. That's what you were working on a few weeks ago. This is my baby. You've made so much progress. You were just on the yoke a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So I'm flying. I it's it's so another one of those pom pom patterns. When I first saw it, I was like, I need that. I need to make it. And this one is bringing me all of the joy. I've tried it on. Um, so this is the Lodestar. It's in the spring summer issue of Pom Pom magazine. The original is knit in a gold. And this time around, I was like, I am not straying from that. I am doing my <laughs> third gold. Um, and I had the, I had yarn for it already. So I think they knit it and it might be, I shouldn't even guess. I think it's magpie. It's one of those, but I'm using, I already had this Julie Aslan. Lesu DK weight. So it's DK 
mostly knit on sides US six needles. Um, and so, yeah, I think when Heather and I did our knit sash, I was like, I, oh, I brought the socks actually, yeah. but I, I actually didn't have the needles in the bag. So I had brought this too, fortunately. And I was like, I'm gonna try, I have to pay attention while also chilling and hanging with you. And so, yeah, so it's um, the yoke. It's interesting when you hold it out, but you won't be able to see it. It's star, it's a star. Oh, that's right? cool, yeah. Yeah, and so it falls on the sleeves and then the front, like the points. Um, and so here's what I was talking about earlier. <laughs> um, I didn't alternate skeins. And I thought about it going into it and I, I knew I should have, and then I let it go. And the other thing I didn't pay attention to in retrospect was because some of the balls of yarn are, they're more alike in color. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even think about that and coordinate. I did no coordinating. I just mm -hmm. dove in. And so basically, you can see. I, uh, the, I can I can kind of see it. It's kind of right yeah. under the armpit, right? Yep. You can yeah. see exactly where I switched mm -hmm. balls. Um, but guess what? I don't care. It's a design feature. Because I love it that much. I love it. I'm not. I'm not one of, I'm not, I'm not the knitter who's going to rip it all out. I'm just not. So it is what it is. And the color, like when I put it on, I mean, you guys kind of see now yeah. it looks, it oh. just looks really good. Yeah. I know when I block it, you know, this has to block out, mm -hmm. but yeah. So this has been my, after I finished the yoke, it's just been stuck in that. So mm -hmm. it's been a really chill knit. And so trying to remember, it's stretchy. Oh, it's twisted rib mm -hmm. um, at the, the neck and then down at the bottom. At yeah. the bottom. And then I, I'm iffy on this bind off. I'm trying to remember what the bind off was, but it's a stretchy bind off. And you use a smaller needle and I'm hoping this blocks out because mm -hmm. it kind of flares. Mm. I, you know, that's that was what was happening on those socks that I ripped out as well. And I think I just, what I've realized is I just aesthetically don't like how a stretchy bind off looks. Yeah. So I was debating. So my plan was to not weave in this, the ends here mm -hmm. on the bind off and block it and see what mm -hmm. I think. Because I really, I don't really know why there's a stretchy bind off down there. It yeah, I mean, as seem... long as it's hitting you on a place where you don't need extra stretch, it should be fine. No. Yeah. I, yeah. So yeah. I, I think that's a little unnecessary weird. So yeah. <laughs> and, um, great use of that yarn. This yarn is 90% merino and 10% silk. Ooh, nice. <laughs> So I was just very excited that it's a yarn that has felt like a special yarn. Um, and I bought it initially for another top and then I was like, it's perfect for this one. And so mm -hmm. ah, that's the low star. Yay. Fantastic. So you might be wearing that one next time. Well, especially if we don't record again for three months, you'll be wearing that. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be yeah. that long. <laughs> I'm gonna put this back on though. I feel exposed. Anyway. <laughs> Um, can, can you show the sleeve of that sweater? Is the sleeve of that sweater crocheted? Of this or is that all knit? This is all knit. Oh, okay. It's that same pattern. Yeah. It just looks very crochet-esque and for some reason more so on the sleeve, but I see. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also because that it's, it's that, that pattern. Cause it, you know, I feel like the, the wrong side of this is mm -hmm. what we might necessarily might usually wear as the right side. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And I'm going to show this last thing really quickly. It's actually something I'm going to rip out, but it's more gold. It's more gold. Well, so what is that? So this is meant to be a pillow cover. Oh, why so are you ripping it out? So going back to the home decor, 
Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'll because we needed another pillow cover. And I was like, I'll need a pillow cover. And we were like, we wanted to go with mustard. And so I ordered this online. And then we had ordered another pillow, throw pillow that is mustard. And we don't think they coordinate well. So mm -hmm. um, after we moved in and did everything with two mustards, the other one's more of a chartreuse. So got it. Um, and Mark went through patterns with me and this was one of the ones he liked and then I chose from there. And so it's called, I think it's like the oatmeal, we'll link it, but I like it and part of me is contemplating it, finishing it and using it in the bedroom because we do have mm. gold in the bedroom. Um, but yeah, it's knit and then it's, you zipper it, but I was also considering um, sewing just mm -hmm. that so yeah more gold yeah nice I like it I mean if you have a use for it then why rip it out right yeah but oh the other thing the though yeah that's the only other thing though like these are 15s and that's it's a little you know yeah a little painful yeah. yeah just a yeah. little annoying to work with <laughs> long term but I'm done. This is so kind many of been, projects. So much is, gold. So much gold. So much gold. Um, One of the yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Well, if you're still here with us after all of our stops and starts, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And we're sorry we were gone for so long. Um and we're excited that we got to catch up with you. Yep. Yeah. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Sooner than three months. And yeah, I think we can commit to that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I should say yeah. definitely. But, we, yeah. I wish it was definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, Bye everyone.